Thank you so much for your powerful words. Um, I think I can speak for a lot of the audience assembled here when um, I say that a lot of your words really resonated, especially when you talked about the blueprint and finding your identity and uh, sort of carving out your own sort of story within this sort of wider narrative um, going on in the world and all these other influential figures that you've had the, had the chance to meet as well and work alongside. So uh, I just quite conscious of the time we've got left. So I will just put one brief question to you and then we'll open it up to the audience. I think we'll aim to take three questions. So uh, you've got some time to think, think up some questions and make them the best questions possible. Um, so uh, expecting big things from you guys in the audience. Um, my one question was just going back to the idea of the blueprint. Mm -hmm. So um, you touched on uh, how you knew that what you had to do and what you wanted to contribute um, to wider society, your own journey, the sort of things that you wanted to achieve and the doors you wanted to open for yourself. You also talked about Tupac and, for example, how Tupac, once he strayed off his blueprint, um, ultimately met the end of his life. Mm -hmm. So how, for, for the people assembled in the audience, as well as myself, so it's someone who's trying to understand how they can contribute to society, what path they should take, uh, take what sort of they should do with the opportunities available to them. What would you recommend to trying to find sort of your blueprint, your own story, um, and how did you go about doing that in your own case? So you have to know where you come from and where you do you want to go. You know, a lot of people major things in college and switch to major. Because that's not what they really want to learn. They find out, like, man, that's not me. Or they're learning it, and they just can't correspond with it. When I found out where I came from, I realized the bigger purpose. Like, man, I'm supposed to do this for these people. I'm supposed to inspire them. I'm supposed to come help them. You know, like, who they named me after, he knew where he came from. He was looking at the direction of the country and the people of the country, where he wanted it to go. That's why he acted the way he acted. To people to know, hey, these are kind of peaceful people. It's what they live by. But for you and yourself, you know, and like I use Tupac as an example, because from my knowledge that's free, the knowledge that I gain on my own that I have to pay for, I learned from his mistakes. And that's one thing that you should do. You know, talk, ask people, don't be afraid, be confident. Because you're learning. You're doing something that a lot of people aren't even confident to do anymore. Don't be afraid to experience things. Don't be afraid to lower yourself. In order to lead, you must follow something. There's no leader who, who didn't learn how to lead. And if they did, and they try to make their own blueprint from just whatever. It never worked out because they never had no correction. They never had nobody to tell them to do it the right way. You know, so number one thing is always confidence. Try to be confident to break a barrier. Be a rebel. All you guys are part of a rebel society. Regardless, it's how it started. It's the way I look at it. From what I know, they tell me people left Oxford because they didn't like the way it was moving over there. Now it's 30 universities in one spot. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, stay the same way. The people who founded the society, think how they were thinking. Move how they were moving. But they were thinking where they came from, right, and where they are now. I'm, I'm, I'm Oxford as an example. I, I came from here and now I'm at Oxford. I don't like the way he's moving. What about what's next? What about the many people that's going to be just like that? There's still people that go to that university, that go to that institution. <laughs> and they're probably different. But then it came to a point where this is the oldest society, where they had to adopt some of your culture from here now. But look at that impact. It's a confidence for that. Even if you look at America, people had to leave here and go there. They had to be confident, live a new life, you know, new agriculture, new animals, new neighbors, because they wanted to do something their own way. 
because they're thinking about where, where they came from, what their ancestors, what, they, what their religion was, and how they wanted to stay close to that. And they were thinking about tomorrow. Now look at it today. I say everywhere is third world except for America. I always use that as an example because it's like fake. We got about 20 New York cities with tall skyscrapers and, you know, an urban area, you know, and then a suburb and then a downtown. It's, it's brand new. I don't know when England started. I don't know when France started, when Germany started, because these are ancient. America was 1776, it's not that long ago. You understand what I'm saying? So, and, and that's what make legacy, and that's what make immortality. And immortality is the goal. Everybody wants to live forever, but it's impossible. Only thing that can live forever is your character. It's the only thing that can live forever. That's your legacy. People say, man, George Washington was like this, man. And he killed this many people and did this and did that and won this battle and won that battle. But that's his legacy because those battles is what gained us our independence. They fought and they fought and they fought. They were confident and they were confident and they were confident. And so they created a whole new world. And then that influence to this day impacts other cultures where people have to adopt it. I'll just use that as an example because he's a legend in a way. He has a legacy. He has schools named after him, streets named after him, degrees. So, I mean, um, number one is, is being confident, but being confident to think your first feeling is always the truth. Your second feeling is the doubt. Your second feeling goes back and forth with the first one. But your first feeling is telling you to do something this way. And your second feeling, then you have a third one, then you have a fourth one. You know, you could buy everything, but you can't buy time. That's the most valuable resource, time. And with that, um, in uh, sort of awareness of the limited amount of time we've got left here with Czech, um, and for this talk in the, in the whole, uh, we're going to take three questions for the audience. Uh, I'd really appreciate if you could make them as succinct and to the point as possible. Um, please wait for a steward to bring you a microphone and uh, ask your question only once you've got the microphone. Um, and with that, we'll start with a um, gentleman in the orange hoodie. Yep. Um, no, thank you so much for a super interesting talk. You kind of mentioned you know, legacy, immortality, greatness. And I was just wondering, how do you, you know, merge your understanding of Harlem, your history, Africa, with all of the historical examples like Churchill and Cambridge and George Washington? How do you like synthesize the streets and the historical examples you draw upon? I mean, Jigger has, you know, Basquiat and Picasso. I was wondering for you, what are like the historical influences that you tie into your understanding of greatness? You saying Jigger and Jay Z? Mm -hmm. Now Jay Z, right? I'm from low income housing. I mean, uh, I was only in the projects because I lost my house to a fire, and we were in the shelter, so this home was given to us. Jay Z is the epitome of me because he grew up in public housing as well. But one thing that helps him is, and what I feel is, he knows how to relate to a lot of different societies. Because he had to grow up with the low income Asian, low income white, low income black, low income Latino. And then on a higher level, he knows the billionaire Asian, the billionaire Latino, the billionaire black. It's being relatable. And that's one thing with me. Music, sports, fashion, that's what marketing is. If you could be in the middle of this, you're going to be one of the most marketable, right? Me, I'm in music, sports, fashion. I played basketball, I led New York City in a CISPR game when I was in high school. I walked into fashion shows. I lived in Harlem. I lived in Senegal. You know, I've traveled to London. I've tried to travel to Europe. I've traveled to Asia. I've lived in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I can relate to so many people, people's lives. Like, I can understand the way they grew up, the way that they live, you know. But that's only through experience, through the free knowledge. That's the experience, is, the free knowledge. The correction is what you pay for. You pay for the professors. That's all. They could just leave, give you out the books and leave, them with, leave you out with the books. 
but you're paying for the lecture. You're paying for his experience and what he knows. So with me and my impact, once I really found out what I'm related to, where I come from, I could figure out where I'm going and where I want to take these people and how I must lead them. But just to answer your question, you know, with Jay-Z, you know, he got that through art. The most influential people in my life are my religious leaders. Because they rich beyond rich. Where I couldn't even understand that. I wouldn't even think Africa was like this. I wouldn't even think it has a home this beautiful, this huge, built on this many acres. I wouldn't even think they own this much farmland and do this and do that. But they did it all through this one blueprint because they know who they're related to, what they got to keep, and what they're supposed to take the congregation. You understand what I'm saying? Let's answer your question. Cool. Thank you for that question. Um, if we could make the next question even shorter, even more to the point, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Just very conscious of the limited amount of time we've got left. Uh, with that, we'll go to gentlemen first in that room. Firstly, I love your outfit. Um, Thank you, appreciate it. So my question is, this, the music industry's kind of got a reputation of being sort of very superficial and a lot of fake people. You strike me as someone who really values sort of creativity and expressing yourself, so how have you managed to, man how have you managed to navigate that? And do you feel limited in certain ways? And if so, how, how are you looking to sort of overcome that? I feel like God put me around the realest examples I could have through a Jay-Z, you know, where I've met him before or I know his friends and talk to them much. One of my friends, Lowe's, grew up under him, or Travis Scott in the Kanye West. You understand what I'm saying? Where these could be my teachers, these could, these could be my professors, you know? Where I could go on tour with him, learn things, see the show. You know, I could sit with Kanye and we go to China and create easy basketball shoes and 700s. And, you know, when I was young, you know, something I left out, this relatability made Nike bring me in. When I was 16 years old, I was Nike, Nike North American basketball muse. So anything that was Nike basketball, they would bring me into these meetings, these focus groups, and they would ask me these questions. Like, what do you think about this? Should we give this person a shoe? Should we give that person a shoe? Because I understood so many ways of life. And that's why I feel like in my music, you know, I always stay real. You know, I, I listen to a lot of my old music, and I'm like, yo, I used to talk crazy. Like, I used to say the craziest things, but I realized, man, that's why people probably love me. Because of that, I might say a feeling like, fuck everybody. Because everybody has that emotion. Everybody has that feeling. You know, everybody just don't have the same time. We are not going to die on the same day. I mean, we don't know, but like, you understand what I'm saying? Like, that's the only thing we don't share. And that's one thing I've noticed and I've realized. That's why you must value your time, what you do with it. You know, and always have intentions with your time. You know, have the intention to learn, have the intention to experience. You know, like right now, everybody's like, drop an album, do this, do that. You know, I got so much music, but I gotta have the proper intention, because then otherwise I'm wasting my time. If you don't have no intention, you're doing it for no reason. You don't know why you're doing it. Intention is letting you know why you're doing it. All you guys have an intention. That's why you're here to learn. You have a place that you want to get to. And that's why you're learning. You intend to learn. You intend to gain knowledge. You intend to experience. You know, but don't be afraid. Be confident. You know, you're chosen. Not everybody can come here. So just, you know, always take heed of that in a way. You know, and stay real. And stay true to yourself. And understand what examples you have. Understand where you have come from, where you are now, what you want to do. I always tell kids every show, man, I'm 21, man. Forget everybody else. <laughs> it's about us today. Because us today, we the ones who are going to build tomorrow. It's true. We're going to be 40, God willing. That's what we want to be. You know, we want to have a long life. We want to have good health. You know, like I smoke, right? Or I used to smoke. I never drank alcohol in my life. Because in what the Quran says, it says, anything that can stop you from gaining knowledge isn't better for you, right? Now, smoking weed, in a way, is good for some people who need it, right? But I looked at it as, man, 
Could I put my keys down right here and forget where I put my keys? And is the weed making me do that because I'm high? Does that mean I'm gaining knowledge or losing it? And I realize, like, damn, I'm losing knowledge of where my keys at. It's not better for me. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, think about it. What were we born doing? We were born eating, drinking, sleeping, you know, going to the bathroom. But somebody had to do it for us. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody had to do that for us. Those are the type of things that we should focus on, the natural things, the things that we need to survive. If you don't eat, you won't survive. If you don't sleep, you'll die of exhaustion. If you don't use the bathroom, you're going to die. <laughs> you understand? You're keeping yourself toxic. You're a toxic person. You understand what I'm saying? But these are the natural things that you need to survive. And those are the things like now, I quit, I stop. Because I want to focus more on being natural. I want to focus more on the things that I need to survive, on the things I need to lead. You know? You should always be the best version of yourself. And the best version of yourself is being natural. Right. With that, we'll move on to the final question. Uh, again, I'd urge you to keep it as short and succinct to the point as possible. Uh, I think we'll go to gentlemen in the front there. Thanks. Um, yeah, really brief, and bring it to the music. I just wanted to ask uh, what kind of... If you could speak a bit louder. Oh, yeah, so, sure. Uh, what some of the UK artists that you kind of vibe with right now, um, especially because a lot of what you said shares a kind of the same energies as rappers like Akala or Jeremy. Mm -hmm. just wanted to know what your sort of thoughts are on the UK scene. So one thing is, is you know, being an African-American. Well, I'm not African-American. I'm an African born in America. But in the UK, and in Europe, in the Eastern Hemisphere, Anybody who's identified as black, they actually come from a place. Whereas so in America, African Americans were brought there, either forgot or don't know anymore. So I really resonate with every, you know, black UK artist because they're from Africa. Like Jay Huss or Stormzy or Skepta. And Skepta is one of my favorite because he's an all in all artist, you know? Like, I feel like he's somebody really involved in his merch, really involved in the album covers, producing the beats that he's rapping on, writing the lyrics. You understand what I'm saying? And he's somebody, you know, who's come to show me respect for my art, where I respect his art as well. So for, this, for the Eastern Hemisphere, I got respect. And I'm not, not on nothing like, you know, like racist to be like, hey, just all the African-American artists. Like, I know this is kind of crazy and Slow Tide did some crazy stuff or whatever. But even him, I respect his art in a way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because he's him. You know, when we both were coming up, I had shows here with him, with him and Lance C. And now we all have grown. I respect that because he kept this one way of doing things, even to whatever happens or happens. I, I love that. I respect it. He's still being him. He's not changing for nothing. And that's one thing that you guys out here that I really respect about your culture. Y'all don't change for nothing. Y'all all about respect. You know? Whereas where we from is like you gotta bow down. You know? But where, where here is more like you gotta respect it, man. You know? Anybody will get down with you. You feel me? Whereas over there is different. When we looked at it as scary or as whatever. Here, everybody's damn near scary. If you want to be, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like, because you grew up in a neighborhood with these same people. You know, low income has no race. It doesn't. High income has no race. Wealth has no race. It doesn't have a, a skin color on it. It doesn't have a country. But the, all these people who grow up doing the same thing. Like, hey, we grew up in the same comments. And that's the same thing with me. That's one thing I resonate with. You know, like my friend Los was telling me the other day, like, being racist is normal. And I'm like, but when I really thought about it, you can't be mad at certain people for just wanting to be the best. Or for certain people wanting to, you know, just, that's what, it's a human thing, it's regular. You understand what I'm saying? But then when you go through certain things with people, you forget that. You forget about the race. Because over here, the rich white man will treat the poor white man the same way. 
You understand what I'm saying? And it's, that's the same thing for anywhere you go in the world, you know? And it's us as the next generation. We kind of didn't grow up with that. Like, we kind of don't be looking at race and things like that. Because no matter what, we all grew up together and we were taught differently. No matter what, we share the same classrooms. No matter what, we share the same professors, the same teachers. Or we might share the same love for Travis Scott or Kanye West or Drake for what they did and what they're doing. You know, hip hop, you know, and I don't like being called a rapper because I don't feel like I just rap. That's just restricting me. I'm an artist, you know? The way I pulled up and dressed there is art. I could have wore something different, but this is how I do my art as an artist, you know? And we all are artists, but you hold your paintbrush. Learn from a different artist. You're gonna have to watch how he hold his paintbrush, how he move, what colors he using. But then learn from him and then make your own art. You understand what I'm saying? And you gotta be confident as well. You have to be to create your own art. And that's one thing I see from people out here. Like the artists out here say the craziest things or do the craziest things. You know, like perform with a severed head or something. Like that's, but that's a form of art. It's still a form of art. Do you understand what I'm saying? And only true artists will respect it. Other people who don't respect art won't. Because you don't know how many people he's speaking for. You don't know how many people he impacted when he did that. You understand what I'm saying? But, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I resonate with, with all the music over here. I, I love all types of music. I listen to everything. I learned from making music from listening to all types of music, growing up hearing it. You know, but not only always having one reaction. I understand, when I see Skepta perform, it was different. Because now all my sense is there. I could smell the must, the, the, the smell of the crowd. And, you know, I could see people throwing up and just lit. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's really helping you take everything in. You are giving your five senses to understand. You're giving your five senses so you can live life correctly. You know, there's certain people that don't have all five. Some people that can't see, some people can't taste, some people can't hear properly, some people can't smell. I mean, I don't know if there's people that can't feel anything, but you know what I'm saying? But, you know, you're blessed to have those five senses, so use all five of them in ways that you could. You know, just like me as an artist, my only inconsistency I feel like is not helping people use those five senses, not giving people enough reactions, you know, not shooting enough videos, you know. Because like I said, when you, a music video, now using your eyes and your ears, and that's helping you resonate, that's helping you understand it. It's the same thing with learning, using your eyes and your ears. You understand what I'm saying? But, um, you know, I thank you for your time, you know, your knowledge and acknowledging me and what I know, you know, and even letting me know what y'all know in a way. Because no one man has the same mind as another man, you know. But uh, just to answer your question, I like all UK artists. I like, I like everybody out here. They tough. They real rebels, you know. I had my first love, my first girlfriend was from London. She went to Queenswood, like this school, like a private school somewhere. And I remember having issues with her parents because of how I talked. I'm like, are they really judging me off of how I speak? Because I just did speak super articulate, super proper. And the rebels in this society, you know, they break they break down that, that whole thought of those type of things, that you could be any way that you want to be. And that's kind of changing your culture here. You understand what I'm saying? As long as I'm speaking English, you're going to understand me. I can sit here and say, you know what I'm saying, a million times. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's going to help you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> but that's the way we do things. You don't want to change that in people. You know, you want to let certain people have their own blueprint and do what they do. 
But just to answer your question, I love all UK artists. For sure. Cool. On that universal truth, uh, I think we'll, <laughs> I think we'll uh, wrap up the event. I'd just like to reiterate um, how surreal it is um, <laughs> that you, you're here sitting opposite me, um, having accepted my invite to, to come and speak at this society. Just like you, thank you so much for, for agreeing and coming and talking to us today, you know, sharing your insight. I thank, I thank anybody, and I love anybody who acknowledges my art. And I have to acknowledge yours. That's what artists do. And you acknowledging my art, you guys acknowledging my art. The whole university not here, only a group of y'all. But y'all don't want to understand, or y'all don't want to want to understand. I want to know, hey, what this guy talking about? What he's about? What he's on? And with me and my religion and my culture, I had to respect that calling. I had to respect the time that you took out to reach out to me. Because I don't know, I could probably impact somebody's life in here. My life probably been impacted. You understand what I'm saying? Only uh, been a lot of prestigious people in the same room. Giving speeches and talking. You know? And in life, the goal is to be immortal. It's to live forever. But we can't. Impossible. Impossible. Because we didn't pick our time. We would have picked our time. We would have picked when we want to die. And then we'd have been like, all right, I got this much time. If everybody here knew the day that they would go, they would go even harder. You understand what I'm saying? And the golden life is to always increase and never decrease. Always. And that's for every person. That's why you guys are all here. Because you're here to increase in knowledge in ways that other people can't. You know, and, and that's something that I have to respect, and I respect y'all too, because y'all are young, just like me. Who knows, in a few years, one of you guys could be the CEO somewhere or the marketing director somewhere, you know, and we'll have to work. But then we could both be like, hey, you impacted my life. Now I'm going to impact yours. Or we impacted each other that day. You understand what I'm saying? But we young. Right now, we got to be together. In our world now, we, we, we kind of we kinda take an uh, you know, uh, example of what our forefathers did, and that's beef with each other. Oh, you did this, and you did that. You said this, and you said that. Now nah, we got to be together. You know? That's what's going to make tomorrow different. You understand what I'm saying? But I really appreciate all you guys for coming out, and I appreciate your time. And I appreciate your art, you know. But one thing I'm going to tell y'all is, don't just be learning. Experience what you're learning. Experience what you're learning. Try to get in the field. Try to, try to shadow somebody. Try to follow somebody you got to learn. Because the same people you mold are going to help mold you too. You know? If your professor taught you or you become whatever, he's going to be like, man, I taught that kid and I did whatever. He has that right. You know, and, and, and time is valuable, so we must take it seriously and be confident. Stay confident, be confident. Seek where you're from. Learn who your grandfather was, who your, 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 your fathers, your mothers. Understand who they are, what they come from, what they do, and what they want you to do. You have to respect that. That's where you come from. You know, that's not something that everybody can have. So... You know, like, uh, I just got a lot of respect for y'all and y'all institution, your institution, and, and, and what you guys are learning and where you guys are going and where I'm going as well, you know. But thank you, Abraham, you know, for taking your time out, you know, uh, reaching out to me, reaching out to my, my team, you know, having us here and taking care of us. The hospitality is wonderful. Thank you. For sure. Thank you for coming once again. Check sure. right. Thank you. Um, thank you all for coming. If you could all rem remain seated while Shek, myself, and the rest of his team uh, head upstairs. Uh, 
I know a number of you have signed up and will have received an email earlier today if you were lucky to be selected for the meet and greet. Um, if you're one of those people, please wait up outside the Kennedy room and uh, some of the stewards will direct you on that. I'm going to stop you right there. When I used to play basketball, I used to ask every basketball player for pictures, right? Not every player would say yes, but some would. Now as an artist, and my team is here with me, I don't deny nobody a photo. <laughs> <laughs> 